Howdy folks, it's uh, January 4th, the next day, Saturday, and uh, I think that's the right number. Anyhow, uh, we got that snow that everybody was talking about, and uh, I brought you over here to uh, Fossil Creek Reservoir. It's about five miles from the house. This is an Eagle Watch area. Geese, not ducks. Now we're gonna go down here and uh, there's a point, not the closest one, but a little bit farther down, right over there in that dense pocket of trees. Now, I can't see it when I'm looking through the viewfinder, but that's where the eagles roost. And it's about 4 p.m. and they should be coming in to roost. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get you in on this uh that's a red-tailed hawk and it's it's nesting right next to these another tree over to the left is uh the bald eagles and they're starting to come in they've been out hunting during the day i hope this comes out hope you like it and the where sweet lake starts between here and sweet lake there's a shallower area. Yeah. If water gets low, it, it's exposed, and so you get uh, you get you get a lot of shorebirds in that area too. That very dense tree right there that they're roosting in. The, the wind's been blowing from left to right, so they were they probably like it better on that side for now. But uh, they got a good field of view. They feel protected and safe up there, and. Uh, I don't know. That's why they're here. And uh, let me guess, this is a turkey. This is a turkey. <laughs> this almost became our national national bird. It probably would have been more appropriate because it's probably. a little smarter. Ben Franklin wanted the turkey to be our national bird, but instead we got the bald eagle. And depending upon who you ask, the bald eagle can be considered a scavenger. He pilfers, he steals, um, but he's also a beautiful bird. So, but Ben Franklin was overruled and we now have the bald eagle. Since 1782, the bald eagle's been our national bird. In Colorado, where we're doing this program, Actually, in North America, the bald eagle is the largest bird of prey, very similar in size to the California condor, which actually might be slightly bigger. In Colorado, the other big bird of prey is the osprey. Bald eagles mate for life. Um, they can live to be 25, up to 25 years in the wild, 40 years in captivity. Um, males are actually smaller than females, and that's primarily because they are the um, hunter of the two, even though both will go hunt, the males tend to do more of the hunting, so they have to be agile and quick to catch the prey. But this is the female, and this is the male. So, males and females will raise the young, but the females tend to be a little bit more protective of the babies. Um, this is a nest up in Dutch Harbor, and this is a baby eaglet, who's probably only about a week old or so. Um, and this is that same, oops, 
This is that same eagle, one month uh, eaglet, one month later, in Dutch Harbor. Um, so you can see they start to get a little bit of a yellow around their face. They start to get um, go from gray down feathers to more brown, which is typical for first year babies. Um, this is a close up of a first year baby, all brown on the face, eyes very dark. Um, they start getting a little bit of the white underneath the feathers. Um, and as they mature, they start to get more white feathers. Um, eagles don't get their white heads until they are about four or five years of age. Um, so as they mature, they have these kind of mottled brown and white, but they start to get their yellow feet and the yellow beaks. And then, as I said, about four or five years of age, they'll become, they'll go all white. So this one's probably about four years old. He's still got a little bit of brown on the head. You can see the tail feathers are still a little bit on the dark side. And then this is an adult eagle here. In Colorado, um, the eagles come down from, the eagles range is from northern North America all the way down to northern Mexico. Um, but the ones that live further north in Canada and Alaska, um, Arctic, will come down and migrate during the winter time, primarily because the water freezes up there and their main source of food is fish. And as they migrate south, the waters will, will be more open in the winter time. Um, they can also have a different variety of food. They will eat other things. So in Colorado, they'll not only eat the fish down here, but they'll also eat birds such as ducks, coots. Coots are a big favorite of theirs, which is what's in this picture. Um, they'll eat mice, they'll eat prairie dogs, they can eat geese. Um, so pretty much anything they can find. As I mentioned earlier, they scavenge and they pilfer and they steal. So in Dutch Harbor or any fishing port, when they bring the fishing nets in, they dump the fish out in the boats, they roll those nets back up. And then they actually have to unroll them so they can fish, um, clean them of the fish and so that they can repair any of the holes in the nets. When that happens and these nets are all unrolled, there's all kinds of fish parts in them and the eagles kind of look at it and go, ooh, look at this little barbecue of food out here. Um, so they'll actually pull pieces, they'll pull those pieces of fish off. This is in Dutch Harbor. So you've got a convocation or a kettle of eagles that'll gather around um, these fishing nets and, and scavenge bite, basically. It's a lot easier for them. They still get their favorite food, but it's a little bit easier for them to catch it. If they do decide to catch their own fish, they usually just jump, um, just put their talons in the water and grab them right out. So there's a fish here jumping out in front of them. This one's already got one in his talons on the back end of his, of his feet. But what's different between the eagles and the osprey is that eagles will, will catch a fish. They'll usually just take it over to the banks of a lake or a stream. The osprey, on the other hand, which eat primarily fish, 99% of their diet is fish, and they prefer fresh fish, whereas the eagle will eat um, scavenged dead fish. The osprey always catches fresh fish, but they always eat it back at their nest. So they actually have to have it more aerodynamic. So the, the osprey will carry it kind of um, perpendicular to their body so that it's actually or parallel to their body. So it's aerodynamic and they can carry it long distances. Whereas the eagle just pick it up and they, they'll carry it horizontal. So the, the osprey will actually carry it like one hand, like almost like hands around the fish. So those are the differences and the facts about Eagles in Colorado. Well, thank you, Don, on behalf of the Garage Gang. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm glad it was a slow night. This is a real treat. Yeah. <laughs> this is good stuff. Good practice. I won't post no, this. No, it's okay. Um, so, in 1782, the bald eagle was made the national symbol. And at that time, in the lower 48 states, or the, the area that would eventually become the lower 48 states, there were about 100,000 bald eagles. Over the next couple of centuries, the, um, as the population of the United States grew, the pop population of the eagles actually went down. And that was because of the use of DDT after World War II, which was a pesticide used in farming. Um, that actually caused the shells of the eggs of the eagles to become very weakened. So as a result, when the eagles sat on the eggs to keep them warm and incubate them, they would actually crush the eggs. So that the, the population started to dwindle as a result of not having offspring. Um, the uh, lead poisoning was a problem so that because the eagle is a scavenger, 
um, they'll eat things like carcasses. So if something was shot, they would get lead poisoning as a result of the lead from the bullet in the body. Um, lead has since um, been reduced in a lot of bullets, but it can still be a problem for them. And then a lot of people had a misperception that eagles stole chickens and pets. Um, they would steal lambs, which is completely incorrect, but as a result, people would actually go out and shoot them. Um, so by the 1960s, in the lower 48 states, there were only 417 nesting pairs of eagles remaining. They were put on the endangered species list in 1967. Um, at that point, they were protected. DDT was not used any longer, and um, the population started to, to increase. So we have which is actually not a bald eagle, that would be a hawk, <laughs> that sound. So in, in advertising, whoops, why don't you toss that one to me again? <laughs> you can edit this. <laughs> um, so in advertising, a lot of times you'll hear um, this sound as the, haw as the bald eagle, and that is actually incorrect. Um, the eagle is, is much more of a chirpy bird. <laughs> Um, which doesn't sound very fierce and threatening, especially when it's your national symbol or your national bird. Um, Coyotes. But it's an amazing, I think it's an amazing sound. It's a very distinct sound that you hear when you're out. So imagine going from 100,000 of, of these down to just 400. So back in 1967, they were put in the endangered species list. Um, there were 417 nesting pairs in the lower 48 states. And in Colorado, um, there was only one pair of nesting eagles left um, in the early 1970s. So between 19, the early 1970s and 2007, um, the population went up to, I think, uh, I think it's about 10,000 now in the lower 48 states. All states in the lower 48 now have a nesting pair of eagles. Vermont was the last one. Um, so we've actually done really well. And in 2007, the eagle was re removed from the endangered species list um, because their population was doing so well. So they're still watched. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service still keeps an eye on them. Um, in Colorado, we're up to, I believe it's 100, 100 pairs of, of um, nesting eagles, so they're doing really well here as well. Um, How cool is that? Yeah, uh, do you know the status on wolves by chance? Uh, I was looking at these Canadian wolves and I uh, on YouTube and they're gosh our darn things were huge and it was uh, talking about how many elk that they take over the course of a winter and it was really incredible and they were just yeah, huge you talk to and how many how many how many elk a wolf a, a pack of wolves let's say an average pack of wolves is you know eight to, I think it's like eight to ten wolves. Um, they'll take one elk and that'll feed them for a couple of days. So if you've got, you know, I don't know how many packs of wolves there are in um, Canada or even in the U.S., but, you know, let's say a place like Yellowstone that has about a dozen, you know, that's not really that many when you look at the whole population of, of an elk herd. Um, so there, there's, there's a lot of research still being done on it. There's a lot of studies being done on it. I certainly don't get involved in a lot of that, so I don't have specific yeah. details. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, Three coyotes. Oh, yes. Yeah. But the, um, the latest word was that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service was doing a, a public commenting period, which ended in December, um, and now they're going to evaluate all that information, all the information they have from um, ranchers, from people interested in, in preserving the wolf and the scientific research and kind of make a decision as to whether they should be removed or not. So they've already been removed from the national, I think they've been removed from the national endangered species list. So. Well, cool. I unfortunately don't know them good, anything. Good information. Uh, we've also been informed that there's uh, some coyotes out here on the ice. I see some dark spots. I don't know if it'll come up in the, there's three of them out there. I see two spots. I don't know what you guys see. There's three of them. My very first photo of a wolf was like that. It was so tiny that I put in the spot. Somebody looked at the picture. My hands are freezing. Anyhow, uh, we're starting to lose the light. And, uh, well, thanks for watching thanks for shoving easy jeezy out <laughs>